drumming my pain with his fingers, singing my life with his words, killing me softly with his song, killing me softly with his song, telling my whole life with his words, killing me softly. I believed just about everything that someone said to me about music, about the divinity of music, about the sacredness of it. Even if the song was not a sacred song, about the sacredness of being able to hear music that no one else could hear. Um, that no one else could uh, repeat when I was a very young girl. And uh, I think I came to be the person that I am today musically because I depended on that so much when I was growing up as a little girl.天狼の町でロバータはスターになった。両親がピアニストという音楽一家に生まれたロバータは幼い頃から音楽教育を受け、15歳にしてワシントンの名門ハワード大学に特待生として入学。クラシックや声楽を学んだまさに最女。More than 25 years, I studied classical piano repertoire. I wanted to be a concert pianist. And I practiced, and I practiced, and I practiced it. My experience was as a pianist, and that's a very important foundation. And I think when you, I think when you study piano, classical piano, and you study Chopin and Schumann, and Brahms, and Beethoven, and all of the romantic composers, Prokofiev, and Rachmaninoff, and Tchaikovsky, all of these, these beautiful, beautiful melodies that were, were uh, available and accessible to me when I was like 9 and 10 and 11. When大学を卒業したロバータは、音楽教師の傍ら ナイトクラブでピアノの弾き語りをしていた。その演奏に見せられた有名ジャズピアニスト、レスマッキャンの推薦で彼女の人生は庭家にスポットライトを浴びる。レコーディングには一流のジャズミュージシャンが集められ、
in New York now. That's part of New York. I think it's this, this, this edge, this nervousness that New York makes you have. Uh, I think it worked very well for her. After the first take, we just ran right through the songs, had a great time with her. I said I love the lie. クラシックを学んだ西条はニューヨーク最高のジャズメントのコラボを皮切りにアーティストとしてのキャリアを重ねていった<音楽>そして1971年彼女の運命はさらに大きく動いた。Caramel, Dave Garner speaking. Hello. Hi, what'll it be? Play Misty for me. Misty, huh? The film, The Pain of Melody. Clint Eastwood was the first to direct this film, and Roberta's song was featured in the film. Hello, Misty. バータ最大のヒット曲「優しく歌って」が世に出る<音楽>しかし実はこの曲彼女のオリジナルではなかった人生最大のまさに運命の出会いだったこの番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Because I didn't record it first. It was recorded first by someone else, written explicitly and especially for someone else, and recorded by this person, as I said. And I get on the plane and I open the brochure that describes what music you can select, and there's a song. The whole brochure said, Killing Me Softly with his song, and had a picture of this young girl. And I said, Hmm. And I put it down, and then I went, Hmm. Killing me softly with his song. Well, after about three or four times of checking this out, you know, I thought, I have to listen to this. So I turned it on. And I listened to it about five times before the plane landed. I heard he sang a good song. Roberta was s u g u n i s o n o k y o k n o g a k f o t o r i o s e t a And so I came to see him to listen. 歌っていたのは西海岸のフォークシンガーロリ・リー・バーマン<笑>優しく歌っては彼女の実体験から生まれた歌だった、uh, they thought it was pretty I don't think any of us though none of us really thought that it was that it was going to go where it went it was just a really 
lovely song at the end of, a, of a, an album. Gone to a club in 1972, one night, my girlfriend called me, said, what are you doing? I went and I heard a singer, and it was Don McLean. And uh, he was singing a song that I'd never heard before. I didn't even know who he was. And he sang a song called Empty Chairs. And then the more I listened, the more he caught me off guard. And the more I realized that he was singing about me, my life, and what I was going through. And uh, just like the song, you know, I felt like he had found my diaries, my letters. And uh, he was, and he wasn't aware of it, but it really... His singing had such an impact on me. You know, as the song started to unfold, I realized what an important and profound experience this was for me. And I felt like I was completely alone in that room. After everyone filed out of the club, after the show was over, I sat there still devastated, and I wrote this, this experience on a poem, on a, on a napkin. I feel a trembling tingle of a sleepless night. その夜、この店で、ドン・マクリーンはエンプティーチェアーズを歌った。Beams of blue come flickering through my window pane. Like gypsy moths that dance around a candle flame. And I wonder if you know. 愛を失った喪失感を静かに語りかける。言葉とギターその歌に心を奪われ書き留められたしそれが名曲の生まれた瞬間だった。Over a course of、uh, a few weeks,、um, when I gave the poem to Norman Gimbel,、um, he kept asking me, So, where were you sitting and, and, and what did you feel? And he translated that poem into more of my personal experience.、Um, and then that poem got set to music by Charles Fox. And so I came to see him to listen for a while. And there he was, this young boy, a stranger to my eyes, strumming my pain with his fingers, singing my life with his words, killing me softly. Said killing me and then killing me softly. The, the, juxt, you know, the, 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 the difference of those two words put together,、um, I think that,、uh, that hadn't been said before. And originally, the music to the song actually was a little different. It was killing me softly with his song. But my voice, I couldn't get the high note, so we changed it with his song. My version was starting to climb up the charts when Roberta heard it, so I think a lot of people did respond to, to, to it. But、um, I can't say that any of my friends said, Oh my God, that's the song, that's the hit song. Yasashiku Tatte no Gakufuga, Roberta Flack no Temotoni Todoitanoa, k 
彼女がジャマイカへツアーに出ている時のことだった。I was in Kingston, Jamaica with my band. And I said, Guys, I want to do this song. So we went, actually went into Bob Marley's studio. We didn't know the song, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. But we went in to have some place to rehearse, and we laid down a little rough track. When we got back to the States and we did our, our date at the Greek Theater,、um, was really incredible, incredible music, working with Quincy. And they wanted an encore, and Quincy said, Do something. So we had an encore, and we did the encore, and then they wanted more and more and more and more and more. And I, he said, Ro, he came over and he said, Ro, do something. I said, I don't know. Should I sing the first time ever I saw your face again? And he said, Oh, no, do something else. And he said, You know, do a hymn. I don't care. I said, Okay. So I said, Well, I have this new song I've been working on. He said, What? I said, Killing Me Soft. He said, Yeah, that's a bet. So I did it. I had not really rehearsed it with the band since we did it that one time in Kingston, Jamaica. And、um, so I started, you know, strumming my pain with his fingers. And,、um, you know, Richard T looked at me like this, you know, like, What are you doing? And、um, he just started to play with me. And he and I played the first verse down together with the drummer. And then,、um, The rest of the band came in because they, they are great musicians and they just, just、uh, understood what, what to do. And it was great. And the audience would not stop screaming after I finished killing myself with his song, you know, like that. They would not stop. And Quincy said, he came over to me, he said, Ro, don't sing that daggone song no more until you record it. And I said, okay. And so I went into the studio maybe about. Two weeks later in New York and recorded it. The first time I heard Roberta's version, I was driving on the freeway in Los Angeles. And、uh, I'm not that steady on the freeway anyway. But at that time, so I'm driving on the freeway. I hear her version. I pull over to the side of, of the freeway, which is this busy thoroughfare. And I, I put my head on the steering wheel and I just said, I, I can't believe this. I just can't believe that she has done, has made such a huge thing out of my little experience. And I, I was blown away. Just blown away. I stood on the side, the shoulder of the, of, the, of the freeway for about 10 minutes. I was mesmerized. やがて70年代に入るとブラックミュージックは急激な様変わりを見せ始めるそこにロバータ・フラッグもいた熱いシャウトとはかけ離れた静かに感情を操る歌声その知的でメロウな世界はそれまでのブラックミュージックとは大きく違っていた To be, you know, so bravura about it and, and, and heavy handed. And so when I transferred all of that music experience to my solo voice, it's just what it is. You know, it's just very, very honest. I think when you tell the truth, you don't have to necessarily scream it. <laughs> 
you don't have to necessarily, you know, do a lot of uh, twists and turns. You can. Uh, but I think, you know, the truth can be spoken and sung and repeated in a very soft manner as long as it is direct. このアルバムでロバータはボーカルだけでなく全てのアレンジも自ら手がけている。そのサウンドは果たしてどのように作られたのか。レコーディングに参加したのはいずれ劣らぬ腕利きのジャズミュージシャンたちだった。It's playing of the moment.、Uh, quite often, you're given a sheet, and that's just a guide, the chord, the chordal progressions. But it's it's up to you, the the musicians, to play what they feel is 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 right for it. She gave you chords, chordal progressions, you know, and it's up to you. To adapt to what she's playing and singing at the same time, so that that's that's what what that's what makes it so interesting, because you have to you have to deal with whatever is there and do the best that you possibly can. On that, you know. well, Roberta is such a、um, personality、uh, that if even we don't know what's going on, she has the Capacity and the willingness、uh, to make her picture so clear for us. I think what Roberta does is special, and I think it's it's special enough that she's in a group of people by herself.、Uh, there aren't many singers, and there aren't even fewer single singer piano players who have their own area that they do it so well that everyone goes around them. And she's one of these people who who has a great sense of musicality. She has great piano skills. She has a great voice. She has a great sense of, for me, group sound. And one of the things she contributes to the music world is her ability to put these strangers together and have them sound like her band, playing her music, in a short space of time. That's fabulous. She had a voice. The, the sound of her voice is different from from anybody I've, I've heard. That helps. And she had, she plays the churchy kind of chords, and had jazz musicians on top of that. So that combination seemed to have worked well on it. So I was quite happy about it. Sometimes music is so magical that you can't you can't write it down and you can't prescribe you know exactly how it's going to sound or be performed or whatever. A lot of it is really、uh, just serious honesty and gut feeling that makes the magic. Roberta's arrangement of this song. オリジナルとは全く違うものに生まれ変わらせた。It was a, it was just a simple folk song. It was mainly guitar based with、um, some piano、uh, flourishes. The most, and it had strings. It had a, a, a male vocal as a harmony. The most amazing part of this song, I think, is that when I recorded it, it was, it had a backbeat. So it was strumming my pain with his fingers. It was that, and the, I think the reason that it became so popular after Roberta did it is that I really think it was the first time that anyone had put a ballad like that into a two feel. So it wasn't the backbeat. It was strumming my pain with his fingers, and and then when she added that chorus element to it, the whoa, it was. She made it a whole different, a whole different experience that I don't think anyone had heard. Oh, da da dee 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 dee, la 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 la, da dee dee da da la da. But you know what?、Um, if you take the song 
a part and you just play the piano part or play the chords. I'm just singing sort of like an obligato over strumming my pain. I'm saying, oh, strumming my pain. Da 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 with his fingers, killing me suffer. It's the same thing, it's the same chord structure, basically. And um, that's what everybody does, you know, <laughs> when they sing the song. Why don't you move in with me? Yuta kana chishiki to sae wataru sense de, jiu jizai ni dokuji no ongak o oriyage te iku Roberta. Kanojo wa masa ni, atarashi soul no kaitakusha datta. ロバータは時代の先端にいたマーヴィン・ゲイと共にニューソウルの騎士と呼ばれたダニー・ハサウェイ彼とロバータのデュエットはまさに新世代の象徴だった。ロバータ・フラッグに続いて登場した黒人シンガーによる洗練された音楽の数々それらはそしてブラックミュージックのスタイルは再び大きく変わる。ヒップホップが流星を極めていった90年代あの名曲は再び蘇った当時の当時の I think other people are going to record this song and do something else with it. My kids were in school then, and all of a sudden, you know, on the pop-up MTV, it said Lori Lieberman, and I was just cool, <laughs> you know, in their eyes, their friends' eyes, I was, I was it. So, I, but I love Lauren Hill, you know, her version's amazing, and I love, I love how it's gone from the little gem of a song to a bigger, to a bigger experience. I heard he sang a good song. I heard he had a style. And so I came to see him to listen for a while. And there he was, this young boy. A stranger to my eyes, drumming my pain with his fingers, singing my life with his words, killing me softly with his song, killing me softly with his song, telling my whole life with his words, killing me softly with his song. I've heard the song recorded by many people around the world in several different languages, you know. Mi fai morire cantano, that's Italian. I'll stop there. Uh, German, mm, Portuguese, you know. Beautiful song. And it's so good that the song has lasted all this time, all these years, and been recorded by young people, young artists, young singers. I even heard a version of Alicia Keys singing Killing Me Softly. It was very, very nice. She did it live, you know. It's just such a nice song. It's a great song.
時代を作りまた時を超えて名曲は歌い継がれていく「Strumming my pain with his fingers Singing my life with his words Killing 